Well, Bloomberg has learned that first half trading revenue for Citadel Securities felt 35% from last year's volatility fueled surge. That is according to people familiar with the matter. Now, the trading firm founded by Ken Griffin generated $2.7 billion in revenue so far this year, and that is well below last year's record haul. Here with more context and the story is Bloomberg News finance reporter Catherine Doherty. And Catherine, I guess a good place to start is why the drop? So Citadel Securities is dealing with the same muted market, just lower volumes that is across Wall Street. We saw the banks report last week that their trading revenues across the board, both in equities and fixed income, is down compared to last year. We're talking about the first half results. So it still remains to be seen if the second half will see a pickup in volatility. These kind of firms, these trading firms, these market makers, they're going to generate more profit when there's more uncertainty. And so last year we saw a lot of reaction from market participants based on fears of recession. We had some questions around inflation and, and the war in Ukraine. All of that was really boosting Citadel Securities profit. So it was a record year for them last year. This year, even though their revenue is down, we're comparing it to record revenue again that was boosted by this uncertainty and, and the record volumes that we saw. So we're, you are comparing against an unusual year, um, but looking ahead, it's it's going to be a big question mark of whether they can continue the, the momentum. And, and really, Wall Street is going to be watching to see if they're picking up more market share from the big banks. It's an important point that when you have the stock market going up and to the right, volatility is going to come down. And you can see that, of course, in the VIX under 14. So it sounds like, Catherine, that a lot of this comes back to these are just tough comps. It is tough comps. And, and a lot of what investors are, are now watching for is where Citadel is entering in the market with their institutional investors. They really um, became known during the mean stock craze in 2020-2021 when you'd hear uh, the profits that they were taking in because of retail trading volumes that were at record levels. But now they're entering into new uh, territories. Last month, they started their credit trading business. Today, we reported that they've hired a very senior credit trader from Citi. So not only are you seeing them enter these new markets and, and try to take uh, market share, but they're taking some of the talent as well at some of the big Wall Street banks. So in many ways, Citadel is almost a proxy for retail trading and how much enthusiasm there is, how much activity there is in um, the transactions and the interest and the engagement of uh, individual investors. It has been. That's typically how they've been known. And even their name has become synonymous um, with retail trading on the internet. Um, they've been dragged into uh, Reddit boards and yeah. things such as that. But uh, the institutional business is, is growing at the same time. And they're really trying to boost in not just equity trading, but fixed income as well. So we might start to see that narrative change it's mm -hmm. it's certainly um, showing in their numbers who are they trying to take market share from when it comes to the institutional side so in fixed income it's the big banks on Wall Street that often are originating the debt um, for companies. So Citadel is not an investment bank. They're not going to be performing that service. Um, but they can step into, as a market maker, um, help their hedge funds and other clients that are on the institutional side trade fixed income. Um, they have a treasuries business. Uh, and they're, they're launching into new, not just in the US, but across the globe. So that's really where they're going to see more market share um, if they can prove to their their clients that they're giving them better prices for for their trades. And Catherine, of course, a 35% slide in trading revenue is going to draw eyeballs for good reason. But as you point out in your story, I mean, this is a company that's posted 14 straight quarters of revenue above $1 billion. So they've been pretty consistent. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, Katie, because in talking to investors about this firm, you might think that the 35% would be a staggering number. But there was so much positive sentiment in just the discussions we were having with investors um, um, credit investors who are looking at a loan that they have in the market. Um, so I, I think that the general sentiment is 
somewhat optimistic despite mm. the decline and everyone is recognizing that this is coming off a record year last year which was unprecedented when we had reported that, that number about a year ago I remember that that was a staggering number in a different way um, but again I don't think that that was a number that folks looked at as sustainable yeah. because it was an unusual time and a confluence of, of many events that that spiked volumes and therefore spiked their revenue yeah you need to put a little asterisk next to the 35 percent drop for uh, the first half here um, Citadel is not private, publicly traded, right? It's a privately held company, but it does have some competitors that are publicly traded. What does this tell us about what some of those companies might report? So Virtu Financial is reporting this week. Um, I'm sure that they're going to be talking about the same uh, volume decline, and they had even started to report that in the first quarter of this year. So I'm sure that first half is gonna be similar. Um, whether or not they're dealing with a, a worse decline, that remains to be seen. Um, but they are are scrutinized in a different way because they are publicly traded Virtu. Um, Citadel has ambitions to potentially go public, but they're, I think, waiting for the right time. And as we know, the IPO market has not allowed yeah. for uh, that right time just quite yet. Um, so I, it seems that they're just focused on growing the business. And then when they feel the time is right, if the time is right, mm -hmm. then maybe they will also be scrutinized in the same way in the public markets. So that's going to be the next big, big chapter for them.